Welcome to the GCN show from the Global Bike Festival in Salbach in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> this week we're looking at the differences between mountain bikers and roadies. We're going to be outlining what makes each of them tick and then pitting them against each other in a series of rigorous physical and mental tests. We've also got a special edition of Hack Forward slash Bodge of the Week with a professional mechanic, no less. And we'll also be checking in with Mark Beaumont and John Schubert as they attempt to break the record in the race across America. <laughs> this week at the Global Bike Festival, we learned that the Austrian Alps are incredible. We also learned, thanks to a major news publication in the UK, the New Milton Advertiser, that Cy's si fear of cows isn't maybe as silly as we all thought it was. No, because an 82-year-old cyclist was rammed off his bike and then squashed by a cow that weighed in excess of a tonne. Now, fortunately, there were some local passers-by who managed to coax the cow away from the man, allowing the ambulance service to get there and take him to hospital. I'm just glad they were able to move it. <laughs> hey, Pain. start as you mean <sighs> to go on. <sighs> um, we also learned that Peter Sagan is back. After 268 days since his last pro victory, he won stage three of the Tour de Suisse. And that means that he has now won at least one race of world tour level every season for the last 13 years. Impressive, and, and well, Peter Sagan, we know that he's a rider that is seemingly equally capable on road and off it. But the same can't be said for the rest of us. Roadies tend to either be just that or mountain bikers, but just them. No, exactly. But because we're here at the Global Bike Festival, which is welcoming to all different disciplines and types of cyclists, Ollie and I have been able to spend a couple of days closely observing the different traits and characteristics of these amazingly different characters. And we decided to note them all down and read them out right now. And to settle the score, once and for all, as to which is best, Hank and Blake from GMBN, we put through a series of tests, most of which have little or nothing to do with cycling. But they are going to be thoroughly entertaining, aren't they? Uh, but before we get to those challenges, we'll bring you the results of the study that Ollie and I have been conducting into these two very different specimens. Yes, so first observation, mountain bikers actually have fun and enjoy their ride whilst they're doing it. Yeah. yeah, weird. Weird. While roadies tend to hate the ride as they're doing it and then only feel a sense of fun when they get that sense of achievement when they've completed it. Exactly, which is very normal, yeah. isn't it? Uh, number two, roadies wear lycra with a lot of style, I might add. Mountain bikers also sometimes wear lycra, but they cover it up beneath baggy clothing that they deem to be more fashionable, even though they know it's slowing them down. It's not aero at all. Idiots. <laughs> Not only that, mountain bikers, they're capable of doing other sports. Yeah. Whereas if you take like a lean, mean, racing machine roadie like us, I mean, it's immediately clear we're, we're barely capable of even lifting, lifting a pint of water. Yes, or, exactly. And <laughs> let alone competing in any other sport that involves you know, upper body strength. Precisely. Uh, difference number four, if you look at a road cyclist, you will see evidence of road rash all over them. If you look at a mountain biker, in general, they look quite normal. But when you see them walking, you will also hear the metal jingle jangling inside them, which is essentially keeping their bodies stuck together. <laughs> Fifth thing, right? I don't normally hang around with mountain bikers, but <laughs> I have been overhearing them talk here at the festival. Mm. We speak very different languages. We do. Okay, they say words that I don't really understand like rad and gnarly and berm yeah. and backflip. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and everything they do is apparently sick. Um, <laughs> whereas us roadies, we talk about much more sensible and interesting things like aerodynamics and power. Mm. I don't know if you noticed, Dan, my FTP is actually five or higher than was is it? last year. Yeah. Well done, mate. FTP is always an interesting subject yeah, to talk about, isn't it? <laughs> uh, right, number six. I've noted that a lot of mountain bikers seem to catch a lift 
up a climb, or sometimes even just walk up the climb, then turn around and basically freewheel back down. They're not even really pedaling. I don't know if you can call that riding a bike. Whereas roadies, they're always riding, mm. they're always pedaling, and no roadie in their right mind would even contemplate getting off on a climb and walking. I'd never do that. No. <laughs> I, 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 I forgot about that. <laughs> I wasn't even fun riding down that, it was just too steep. It was horrific. Oh dear. Well, I forgot yeah. to bring my violin with me, Ollie, unfortunately, so I we'll need to move on now. Number seven, other thing I've noticed here, is mountain bikers, they don't really, like, clean their bikes. They're happy to turn up to the start of a ride with a dirty bike. In fact, it's like the dirtier the better. It's like a badge of honour. Mm. Roadies, we'd never do that. We like our bikes so clean that you could eat your dinner off them. Our bikes, at the start of a ride, are cleaner than when they were new. Exactly, the way it should be, I see. <laughs> and finally, difference number eight. Well, actually, there's a similarity because both roadies and mountain bikers have been known to dabble in drugs, but for very, very different reasons. <laughs> Although, I should point out, we've not seen any of those shenanigans here no, at the not Global at Bike Festival. I don't think anyone here is going to be ending up on the Oprah Winfrey show. Well, let's hope not. Although, soon. Hank was suspiciously good, I thought, at the Crank It Up Zwift event <laughs> yesterday <laughs> evening. And Steve Jones of EMBN fame... There he is. ...found it suspiciously difficult to walk in a straight line to the bar last night. <laughs> also, he found it suspiciously difficult to open his wallet once he got there. He did, yeah. Uh, they couldn't even find it beneath the dust that has gathered <laughs> on top of their wallets. Uh, right, I think it is time for the challenges. Are you all ready for these? Yes. Yes. In that case, please welcome to the show Hank and Blake. <laughs> right, it's time to decide once and for all who is best, mountain bikers or roadies. We've lined up five physical challenges and five mental challenges. Just to be clear, when I say mental, I don't mean like rad. Like, or like <laughs> no, doing I, don't. Flips. I mean like Backflip. cognitive ability. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. Struggle that. there. Oh god. Uh, now each win will give you one point in the competition and each correct or closest answer will also give you a point. Uh, just before we move on though, we should point out that Hank is not really a true roadie because A, he has fun and B, he has upper body muscles, which he likes to show off at any opportunity, <laughs> and even if there's not an opportunity, he'll squeeze one in. Right, so on to challenge number one. Press-ups. You each have 30 seconds to do as many press-ups as possible. Yeah, and before you start, before you start, you need to know challenge number two, because immediately after you finish the 30 seconds of press-ups, you have to do the lung capacity test. Highly scientific. With a balloon. Basically, once the pressers okay. are finished, the quickest to blow up the balloon until it bursts is the winner. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 20 seconds to go. Halfway. Five, four, three, two, one. Balloon challenge, quick! Oh, that was, that was, that was very good. On to challenge three, which is the plank challenge. Oh. Yes. How long can each of you hold a plank. So assume the plank position, the first one to drop out um, loses. Three, two, one, go. What are you thinking about, Blake? Giving up soon? Okay. <laughs> okay. I have to say, Blake's, Blake's position is, is correct, whereas Hank's is... What's wrong with mine, Ollie? Blake, Blake's Cheek. plank is straight and yours is quite curvy. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the shape of my body. <laughs> You're on 40 seconds. Ah. Oh. Ah. Come on, Hank, come on, Hank. Oh. 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 Two minutes in. Oh, I give up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, in terms of the physical challenges, is it's a test of flexibility. 
basically, which is why I have a tape measure. Here. Oh God, I want one. <laughs> so, Trousers. In this I one, jeans. we will see whether Blake or Hank can get closest to doing the split, and I will measure the difference between their crotch and the floor beneath them. The crotch drop. Oh, well, where are you going down there? <laughs> oh, you don't like it, mate! <laughs> 42 centimetres to beat. <laughs> Holy well, it's a Well, it's a clear win for Blake. Oh. <laughs> On to our final physical challenge. Physical challenge number five. Um, this is who can neck a pint the quickest. This is a family show, though, so water, sorry. So we have, right. to, we have a, a pint of water each. Yeah. Uh, the quickest wins. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> oh that's cheesy. <laughs> hey. Uh, now, unfortunately, challenge number six is not suitable for all people, so we can't show you at home. That's an exclusive for the Global Bike Festival audience, but Rhodey's won it, so we're very happy. Yes. Aren't we? <laughs> With very little help from me, believe it or not. So the next part of the uh, quiz, you'll get a point for each correct answer, all the closest to it. So, question number one is... What year did the first ever UCI Mountain Bike World Cup take place? And you need to answer it first, Hank, because Blake's got a better chance of knowing this. Uh, it's it's got to be 1983. Yep. Okay. Over to Blake. Oh, the closest yeah. answer wins. 91. 91. You are closer, Blake, because it was 1989. Question two. Yeah, what year did the Tour de France first take place? Oh, uh, you've got to get this right, Hank. I'll be very sorry. Oh, Blake gets, Blake to go gets first. first choice. Oh, really? 65, 19. No, nah, mate, you're way out. It's 1903. Oh, you got it right. I don't think you get it. Mate, I wrote it. Yeah, yeah I don't think you get it. Cheat. <laughs> Ollie said to me earlier, Hank, he still won't know it, even though he rode a stage from the 1903 <laughs> Tour de France. That is old. Uh, right, you have to go first on this next one, Hank. The question is what is Neil Donahue's best result at a UCI mountain bike downhill oh. World Cup? 28th. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, <I'm> black. <laughs> Out I mean, of 28. Do we, nah, there's a lot in. Yeah. yeah, you win one. First. Second. No, his best result, I believe, was ninth, which he achieved twice. Oh, sorry, but yeah. that still means that you are closer. Yeah. I, I, lo I love that Hank said, oh, I don't know, 28. <laughs> <laughs> It's been top ten twice, mate. Uh, next question is, what position did Dan finish the 2010 Tour de France yeah. in? You get to go first, Blake. Th please don't say the fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fetal position. <laughs> no, I... Eighth. Eighth! <laughs> Second from last, is that right? We need to give you, you a number in the number. position. Oh, like. God. Uh, I, I'd say 78. 78. 78. Uh, well, you were both wrong. Um, I was 160. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I knew it was like, oh, you get that but that is still a point. Don't apologise. You said he was eighth. I I can see why you think that. <laughs> just didn't, just didn't quite way. go my way on the day, <laughs> Sorry. on the 21 days. Uh, right, finally, in which year did GCN launch its YouTube channel? Oh. I'll go with you first, Blake. 15. <laughs> I guess it's 2013. Uh, neither are completely correct, but you are closest, Hank, because the first video came out on the 12th of December, 2012, and that brings us to the end of the challenges. I think, Dan, that we, um, well, as we add up the scores, mm. we should probably just give the audience something to watch. So here's the first ever GCN show. <laughs> the world of cycling is just about to get a hell of a lot less complicated. Welcome to the Global Cycling Network, or GCN. <laughs> right. I have totted up the results and I can reveal 
that Hank, who represents all roadies around the world, has scored seven points, whilst Blake, who represents the dirty fraternity worldwide, <laughs> scored five. Oh, yes! I've, I've just done my first turbo session after um, the Wicklow 200, which was five days ago now. Um, geez, my legs were killing me for the day after, the two days after the Wicklow 200. And then, uh, then I had to go to a wedding in Spain and um, didn't eat very well, drank a good bit. Um, so now it's five days later, it's the first time I'm really moving my legs properly. And um, I mean, it was okay. Felt okay. Uh, I felt strong actually. I, I, I think I, I was, um, uh, you know, I only did an hour. Back to it now. Final, fi final few, uh, final few bits of training now coming up. So back at it hard and uh, back to eating properly. And now it's time for cycling shorts. Thanks very much to Killian for that update. On to cycling shorts now. And we mentioned last week that, well, it's very much ultra endurance season at the moment, and it really is. Our very own Mark Beaumont and Jonathan Schubert are about to take on the 3,000 mile long race mm. across America. Now, we have no idea how they're getting on in that race because the main reason for that is that as we record this show, they haven't actually started it yet. But nevertheless, we'll hand you over to the States now to get an update from them both. Hi everyone, just a quick update about our Ram entry out here in the US. Sadly, John and I have had to withdraw from the race. And to find out more about what's happened in a longer video, do check out the GCN app. Most importantly, a huge thank you for all the support and the lovely messages across social media. We don't know what they just said in that update, but I mean, I'm sure it was great. Yeah. Guaranteed internet gold. Well, that's not the only uh, ultra endurance race that's happening right now, as the 4,000 mile uh, Trans Am race is also taking place where there's actually a battle for the top spot. 55-year-old uh, Pauli Craig from Milwaukee is currently in the lead, mm. having covered a distance, get this, where is it? Where have I written it? 2,948 miles in 11 days. Seriously impressive, isn't it? But just behind him is a man from our neck of the woods, Ollie, Bristol in the UK, 34-year-old uh, Ben Davies. Well, you say just behind. He's 100 miles behind. Yes, but this is the world of ultra endurance, right? Like I said, it's 4,200 miles long, this race. 100 miles, you're basically still in the slipstream of the rider <laughs> in front of you. Uh, anyway, regardless, as we record this at least, they've still got 1,200 miles in which to duke it out. Well, if, if you say so. If, I mean, if sleeping in a hedge in your cycling shorts is not your thing, don't worry, because there's been plenty of, well, tech news uh, that's come out, including this, which is an e-bike motor that you can attach to your bike, and it actually propels your bike by spinning the disc brake rotor. Mm. Uh, it's called a Scarpa, and in addition to the disc brake motor, there is also a battery that you can basically bolt on to the chainstay, which means that you can quickly and easily change your bike between normal bike and e-bike, which sounds like a fantastic idea. Yeah, and it's got the backing of track cycling legend Sir Chris Hoy as well, so who knows, maybe if you use this device, you'll have his kind of power outputs. Yeah, here's hoping, an extra 2,000 watts. Uh, Poc have also just launched a brand new helmet called the Maya Lin, which is in part made from recycled materials, but it is also completely deconstructible, which means that when the helmet reaches the end of its usable life, every part of it can be recycled. And cycling tips have reported on an archaic law from Western Australia that they've discovered which apparently pertains that it is illegal to ride a bike with handlebars wider than 660 millimetres. Yes, and we know that it was a mountain biker that created this rule who is very intelligent and very stylish. Because we all know that nobody can possibly need handlebars wider than 660 millimetres. I mean, with that width, you've still got plenty of room to put the bar ends on, haven't you? Uh, anyway, we're going to finish or come to the end of Cycling Shorts now by promoting a couple of our own products. So we recently released our uh, most recent book called The Complete Fan's Guide to Pro Cycling, written by Peter Cossens. And there is something in there for everybody, whether you've been a lifelong fan of the sport of pro cycling or indeed, if you've only just got into it. Uh, so make sure that you read that and buy that if you so wish. I, I do love a good book plug. 
You can also get a discount at Shop Rock Global Cycling Network if you also buy uh, the limited edition GCN Yellow Elite water bottle. You get 10% off. You do. And now would be a good time to take advantage of that because we are only 10 days away from the start of the Tour de France in Copenhagen. Right, we shall finish cycling short by heading over to get an update from Ottilie Quince on her epic ride. So that's stage 10 of the London Square OQ Vuelta a Casa. We're now here in Mouchetel in Switzerland. It's been a very hot day, not as hot as yesterday. Yesterday hit the mid-40s. Um, it, is, it is hard going. It's harder than I anticipated. But I've got the best team and today I had lots of friends with me as well from Switzerland and from Holland, uh, which makes it a lot, lot easier. Tomorrow we head down to Lake Geneva and then we'll be halfway of our Grand Tour to Mallorca. And yeah, just thank you so much for all the support. It's going amazingly well. And yeah, having a few muscle uh, relaxants now, a few recovery drinks and on to stage 11. Thank you for all the support and please keep it coming. It is now time for Hack forward slash bodge of the week. And as you can see, we've got a very special guest, Calvin from Park Tools. Welcome along, Calvin. <laughs> very nice welcome. Uh, so first up this week, we have this one that came in from Pegacorn Racing. Uh, replacement crank arm. Saw this in a bike rack. Looks like a stripped pedal on the original crank arm. And rather than replacing the arm, a new pedal and crank arm have been attached. <laughs> Now, before Calvin gives us his opinion, we're going to get the opinion of the audience here in Saalbach in Austria. There's, there, I can see at least three, four hacks, but the vast majority are red. They're saying that's a bodge. Please give us your assessment. We're not proud of that. We're not telling anybody. Uh, it's bodge. a bodge. Bodge. Okay. Next up, we've got this from Don Turner which is a 3D printed fork mount, right? And he's attaching water bottles on them. What do you make of that? He's gonna sell it. Hack. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I presume you're gonna get a hack, sure. Uh, what material is the 3D printer? We won't worry about that. Yeah. That's a hack. Our uh, next one comes in from Sean Lamaru. Zip ties. Yeah. Bottle cage bolt got stripped, so I had to use the GSM presenter's favourite thing, zip ties, and seven of them as well. Listen to this next bit, right? I also have zip ties holding on my front tyre as the quick release part broke. <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying? King of the box. <laughs> that is genuinely unanimous. Oh, no, there is a, there's, a, there's a couple of hacks over here. What are you thinking? <laughs> Calvin? Uh, next up, we've got Taris Goran, who has submitted music on the go. They appear to have attached a, a, a Bose speaker to the front of their bike there. Um, I mean, what do you make of that? What, what's the audience saying on this one? Ah, almost. It's a 50, bit of a split. 50 uh, split. But what, you can see it closer there, Calvin. What do you make of this? Uh, that's, a, that's a hack. There's are nice aluminum fittings there. Music's, but bose has got good, good taste. Uh, <laughs> well, we do, but we don't know that, do we? I well, mean, what it's playing is going to play the DJ that you're playing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, do I say Renzo Santiago, DIY bike hanger. I used some old abused mountain bike tires for a recycled bike hanger. I tied it on with some old shifter and brake cables. Big savings. Shout out from Fan Bihira Cycling Club here in Santa Cruz. What are we saying in the audience? Ooh, I'd say sort of 60 or 70 versus 30 in favor of hack yes. for that one. Reduce, reuse, recycle, hack. Ooh. It's a hack from Calvin. Uh, next up we've got Stark Mapper, uh, who's done a waterproof light mount. <laughs> Audience, what are we saying? Uh, we're not proud of that. We're not telling our okay. friends. <laughs> well, that, that is unanimous amongst most of the audience and Calvin, and most of you who voted on it on the app. 85% said bodge. 15% said that was a hack. What on earth are you talking about? <laughs> uh, next up, sandwiches and peddling. Elegant kayak trailer. My typical kayak dolly was unstable. I found the kids trailer for 10 bucks and modified it to serve as a stable kayak base. Then I got some PVC pipe laying around and drilled a couple of holes in that. I angled the holes for the seat post to create a stable wedge. Uh, and then I also cut a U shape to notch in the head tube. Simple and cheap. 
hack. A lot of hack. It's clever. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Two budges. Yeah. Right? You're saying hack, Calvin. Yeah, with a lot of good thinking, a lot of good physics in there, understanding of the, the, the system. Hack. Okay, we've got quite a few hacks this week. Yeah, I like uh, it. Well, as ever, next week's hacks and bodges are already on the app for you to vote on. But if you would like to contribute yourself with your own or something you've seen on the street, uh, please do so by uploading to the GCN app. Uh, thanks very much, though, to the studio audience and to Calvin. It's time now for the caption competition and your chance to win a yellow GCN Elite water bottle. First up, We've got last week's winning caption. What we have that? underneath this photo of Thibaut Pinot at the Tour de Suisse, I think it was. And the winning caption came in from Webdev DJH, which says, Thibaut Pinot expressed regret for getting a manicure right before the start of the Tour de Suisse. Very well done to you, Webdev. Get in touch with us on Facebook with your address and we'll get that bottle out to you. Uh, this week's photo is also from the Tour de Suisse. This is Remco Avenepool, clearly very hot. I will get you started. Someone help me quick, I've got a bit of water dangling from my head. <laughs> we will add the previous laughter into yeah. this part of the show <laughs> once the edit comes out. Uh, do your best in the comment section down below and we'll pick a winner this time next week. Almost at the end of the show now, we've had a very patient audience. All that we need to say is what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days. Uh, starting with Wednesday, where we're asking, does spinning make you a better cyclist? And I'm presuming, Ollie, that this is not an indoor class. We're talking about cadence. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just wanted to get that straight. Uh, on Thursday, top five things that every beginner cyclist should know how to do well. And on Friday, we are comparing heart rate versus power and letting you know which might be best for your own circumstances. On Saturday, we're looking at the Amazon bike's top speed. Yes, the Amazon bike returns again and Hank decided to see how fast he could go on it. Um, it's not the safest bike in the world, so that'll be it. A fun video. And we're also looking at the ultimate bike van, which I drove to the festival here in Selva. Yeah, and you loved it, didn't you? It's pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> just before we finish the show, a quick update on what we've got coming up for you on GCN+. Plus. It is a slightly quieter week from a racing point of view as we start to gear up towards the Tour de France. But that said, we do have a few national championships for you live this weekend. Spanish, French and the British national championships. Uh, some of them are just the road races. I think the English, or the British one, is the criterium and also the road races. And with the French, you'll get the time trials and the road races. And the documentary, which is actually out today on GCN+, is entitled Tasmania, Convicts of the Road. So we've got two ex-pros, uh, Mitch Docker and Alan Lacroix. We went over to Tasmania to take a long ride and also look at the historical spots around that part of the world. So check that out when you've got time to do so. Right, I really enjoyed that show, yeah, I've got to say. Uh, thanks to the studio audience for being so patient with us. <laughs> for not only being patient with us, but laughing when paid to do so. That was very much appreciated. Hope you enjoyed it at home. We'll see you this time.